Hello YouTubers, Rogue One Key Jr. here, and in today's video we're going to talk about Battlefield 5 fortifications. Now, uh, put your pitchforks down, don't worry, this isn't going to turn into Battlefield Fortnite. I know a lot of people have been making those comparisons, but I think it's just because fortifications were probably very poorly explained uh, in the reveal, and a lot of people were wondering like, what, what the hell are fortifications doing in Battlefield 5? This is becoming Fortnite, it's a mashup of all these different games. Well, no it's not, it was just poorly explained, and to talk about fortification, we first need to talk about destruction. So destruction in Battlefield 5 is going to be a little bit different than previous titles. So in certain titles like Battlefield Bad Company 2, you could literally just blow the whole map apart and have zero cover. In Battlefield 3, it was toned down a little bit. Battlefield 4 and Battlefield Hardline had a level illusion which would literally cause like an, an event on the map which was player controlled to actually change how the map would play, change large parts of that specific map, and in turn change the flow of it. In Battlefield 1 you did have a good amount of destruction, but not as much as previous titles where you could literally have maps that almost didn't have any cover whatsoever. In Battlefield 5, destruction is going to be a little bit different. Now, first, there will be no more like simple destruction, for example. By simple, I mean let's say a tank driving through a house won't uh, won't just crush the entire house apart. There's going to be like an actual uh, tank hole in the house where he went through and it doesn't necessarily mean the whole house is going to be busted at that point. The, the, the other two walls might still be standing so the house might still be standing after a tank has gone through it. Another important part of destruction is the dynamic destruction and what I mean by this is for example you shoot a tank round, this is the example they gave uh, or I heard in some YouTubers video, uh, basically you, let's say you shoot a tank round at a wall, okay? In Battlefield 1 it would literally just like fall on the ground. But in Battlefield 5 how it works, there's dynamic destruction. So if, if a tank shell hits the outside of a wall, the wall will then crumble inwards. So the force of the explosion, the force of that tank shell is going to hit the wall and the wall is going to collapse towards the inside of that house or bunker or whatever. And the contrary is also true. If a tank shoots a shell through a window and the impact uh, happens inside the house, well, the force of the explosion is going to blow up the wall through the, to the outside of the house. So it's going to be very dynamic. And there's also they've also introduced something called decay. So for example, uh, if you shoot a, a building and some beams, like, it starts crumbling a little bit, but some beams aren't necessarily uh, fallen yet. Well, uh, depending on the weight of the the material that is used to make that specific beam, so, for example, if it's concrete, uh, if five minutes later, it might actually fall on you if you're in that building. Uh, but if it's wood, it might take, like, I don't know, 15 minutes to fall. So these are all things that are going to make the Battlefield feel much more alive and dynamic as opposed to Battlefield 1, where it was very much linear destruction, okay? So you would drive through a house, the, the house would crumble. You would shoot a wall with a tank, the, the wall would crumble in a linear fashion to the ground, and that was it. But in Battlefield 5, it's going to be much more dynamic, much more interesting uh, to actually see how all this destruction is going to affect the map. And of course, uh, some most of the small buildings will be entirely destructible, but the larger buildings, the ones that actually give substance to the map and cover and like strategic points, probably won't be able to be destroyed completely. There's always going to be some sort of like it's still going to stand even after multiple uh, tank shell impacts or stuff like that. Now let's move on to fortifications, which is the part where I said don't raise your pitchforks just yet. You got to just listen to how they work. Okay, so basically fortifications, uh, obviously you fortify stuff. But how this is done, okay, so basically everyone on the battlefield has something called a toolkit, which uh, it doesn't matter. You always have it on you and anyone can do it. But the way that you can fortify is... DICE have picked certain spots on the map where you can actually place down fortifications. So you can't build some sort of mega base in the middle of a field where nothing's happening. I can just feel the comments right now about, oh, thank God, snipers won't be able to build a sandbag bunkers in the middle of nowhere and not help the objective or PTFO. No, they will most likely not be able to do something like that, okay? And of course, all in the name of balance. So basically, uh, let's say you're attacking a flag, okay? Uh, 
and you get there there's not a whole lot of cover most of it's been destroyed well there's probably going to be a couple of points on there which you can actually fortify with these are the fortifications that everybody can do so sandbag walls uh, dragon's teeth which is that lovely barbed wire that you always get stuck on as well as fox holes and tank traps now the support the support gets a little bit more love here because obviously the support class is made to support your team and squad so the support can uh, build fortifications faster than other classes which is his strong suit and also has access to some more uh, some more deadly fortifications okay so he can place machine gun nests and cannons which makes the support class a very viable and useful in defending probably certain points or choke points on a map or certain areas when playing for example grand operations and they're they're pushing the objectives and you want to defend something at all costs you need something to destroy those tanks well if you have a support on your squad well good for you you can now place cannons in order to defend yourself against the armada that will soon be knocking at your door so that is fortifications in a nutshell. I think it sounds very good how they're balancing it that you can't put fortifications anywhere on the map because that would just be too much and you'd have probably that the issue of snipers camping in the middle of nowhere with their little sandbag bunker just trying to not get shot at all costs so that's great. Uh, so I just wanted to make a little video clarifying the fortification system and to say that it's nothing like fortnite okay and we're really just gonna have to see uh the gameplay at ea play in a couple of weeks to actually see how the fortification system plays out how the new destruction system plays out um, but i think it is a very good addition to the game because it's just going to give you more options more tactical gameplay and give you the ability to actually defend flags as opposed to just run around attacking flags and going back to capture flags that have been capped by the enemy it's also of course going to prevent barren wastelands of map playing something like tdm on i don't know gold mud will on battlefield 4 that map by the end of it or domination it would just there was no cover left it wasn't even fun to play so it's going to prevent stuff like that from happening lastly before i forget uh no there was no notes on how long it would take to build or if there was a cooldown on building fortifications uh but i'm sure we'll see all that at ea play in a couple of weeks so let me know in the comments down below what you think of the fortification mechanic what do you think of the improved destruction in battlefield 5 while you're down there be sure to hit the like button if you enjoyed the video subscribe to the channel if you have already i release battlefield and first person shoe related content pretty much every day and as always thank you very much for watching i really appreciate it and i'll see you guys in the next video have a good one